Hi there, Simon from simonboys.com. Uh, yes, I'm in a slightly strange kitchen today. It's uh, I'm in a place called Sheringham in North Norfolk, having a few days away from uh, the rat race. Still got time to uh, taste some wine and drink some wine. And the wine I'm tasting, Stroke, or Stroke, whichever way it works better for you um, on the camera, uh, uh, today is Domaine du Grand Main Moileur 2012. So we're in the Côte de Duras, uh, close to Bordeaux. Uh, and um, Grand Main does... Um, I, I've tried some of their whites, I've tried some of their reds. They mostly use, uh, well, they, they use all the Bordeaux varieties. So Semillon and Sauvignon for the, uh, for the whites, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot for the reds. Uh, but slight um, departure from protocol for, for this sweet one. So there is Semillon, 50%, as you say. Uh, there is Sauvignon Blanc, 30%. But the other 20% is made from a grape that is more usually associated with the Loire Valley. So we're, we've got 20% Chenin Blanc in here. 2012 Moala. Um, let's give it a whirl and um, see where we get to. So you probably can't see the colour against my um, purple jumper. Um, but it's, um, it's quite golden in colour. It's coming up for its fifth birthday. And... Um, uh, quite a lot of um, botrytis character. The botrytis character comes across in this slightly honeyed, uh, toasted apricot, toasted dried apricots, if that makes sense. Um, so how can you have toasted and dried apricots? But uh, it's this thing where the, the, there's almost like a, someone's made dried apricots, uh, got dried apricots, then rehydrated them, then covered them in something like honey and cream, and then uh, then warmed them up and uh, uh, yeah, shoved them under a grill, and uh, you're getting this slightly roasted. Uh, roasted edge uh, along with these honey um pineapple a little bit yeah the apricot certainly and um it smells like it's going to be unctuous strange thing is it's not quite as unctuous as i expected uh, the semion seems to be the thing that's um, um where the, maybe that that's that, that's the one where the the botrytis has struck most it's almost as if the shenan is there um adding a little bit of um just freshness because um, uh, one of the problems sometimes with botrytis wines is they can be so rich, thick, dense and heavy that sometimes they're too much of a good thing. It's almost like cream and custard uh, on, on, on your pudding. Here, there's a guava-like character that uh, I'm not sure where it's coming from. I imagine it's the Shannon. So I don't know whether there was botrytis in the Shannon, but uh, there is certainly this uh, freshness of fruit there. Feels like not all of the grapes had gone had, had uh, been botrytis affected. I have to say I don't notice too much of a Sauvignon influence, um, but um, I do notice this lovely, lovely texture. Uh, sometimes you get uh, um, botrytis wines, sweet wines, where uh, there's everything is just like ratcheted up just one level too much. Here, there is a freshness, there's a zestiness, there's a juiciness, there's this citrus zip, uh, and there's this guava-like zip too. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's one of those wines that I, uh, it's almost, I don't, I don't know what the residual sugar is, but uh, certainly, uh, n probably not sweet enough for things like sticky toffee pudding, but uh, more the sort of thing that you want to pull out with your fresh fruit tarts, your blue cheeses and stuff like that. It's um, tasty, it's five years old now and it's still fresh. Um, I'm very interested to see how it develops, but when it's tasting like this now, um, it's going to be pretty hard to keep your mitts off it. So, um, hey, I've opened this bottle, uh, so it's not going to last too much longer, And uh, but I'm going to enjoy uh, what's left in it. And I think you will too. See you soon.